Testing. Alright, good evening. I am Tiro, and this is Steam Test Fest 2021 Marathon Results. Part 1. So, uh, Steam, before its summer sale, uh, did a uh, basically a marathon of featuring all these games that have play t have demos out. And basically I went through the entire list that they have for the featuring of these demos. Oh, also another great thing is that um, during this little marathon of featuring uh, games with demos, they also had the developers streaming the games. And there's usually about like six streams going on at a time, marathon style, which is, you know, very, very nice to see the devs actually promote their work rather than other people so i went through the whole list downloaded them i'm halfway through with it i and this is kind of you know this video is almost like a journal entry of it just evidence so here's my profile recently played and we are just going to go down and as you can see all of these no image available because they are most of these demos are for this uh test fest um, are basically alphas, mm. but this is almost like physical evidence of my skill of play testing, which I kind of started around 2010 and has probably killed my ability to actually just sit down and play and enjoy games because I basically have seen so much in such a short time that, okay, here we go to amazing chicken adventure was the first I started. I have played so much and have kind of seen so much that I can tell very quickly whether it's a game I like or not. And I'm bragging to as many people as possible I've, <laughs> that I've done this. And if you don't know, this is kind of a background video that you'd be listening to. So put something on and whatnot or music. But basically it's, um, yeah, I had the unfortunate situation that I can tell a good game that I like within 30 seconds and everything else that's either bad or something I don't like, I have to actually play it, you know, um, for like five minutes to kind of get the feel. Uh, just due to experience and intuiting. So, um, that's what I play tested. Here's actually what I wish listed. Now again, like a, a previous video's wish list, do not buy me this. I am not asking for these. This is just more of like, hey, I find these games interesting. You may find them interesting too, if you kind of like my selection and samples. So anyways, as a uh, kind of also a preamble before we actually start going through the first half of everything, I do not like and did not like point and click adventures. Um, Visual novels, sports games, racing games. I do not like precision platformers like Super Meat Boy or I believe Celeste. You know, the whole like dying 10,000 times to get uh, specific results. I don't care for the kind of super indie introspective um, navel gazing type platformers such as Limbo or... What's the one I came across? Self-loss, where everything is kind of metaphorical in this experience and whatnot. Like I, so I don't like those games. What else did I don't like? <clears throat> I am inexperienced in simulation strategy games, so that uh, those will come in part two if once I get around to it, because those will actually take longer since those type of games take a while to reveal themselves. So. I think that's basically it. So, uh, let us crash through all of these. Okay. I gotta find out where these things are, because it's best to go in alphabetical. Okay. All right, things that are actually in Test Fest. Darkest Tales. I just contradict myself by adding this. This is a kind of um, indie Ludo narrative platformer like Limbo. But in this case, it's basically a girl's teddy bear. He goes into her dreams. And so it's kind of like a Grimm's fairy tale dark thing. 
I like the aesthetic. I like the premise. I just hate the fact that it's very talky at the beginning. It's like, show, don't tell. Um, and whatnot. So, so yeah. A uh, Deepest Chamber. <clears throat> this is a deck builder. So, Slay the Spire. Uh, 3D perspective. Dungeon crawling. Looks good. Feels good. I don't know if it's balanced. Try it out if you like uh, Slay the Spire. Draco Knight. This is Amiga Shadow of the Beast, okay? Or at least that's the graphical look. The controls, I believe, are trying to imitate Dark Souls or a Souls-like game because you have an attack high, an attack low, a shield high, shield low, and a parry. And it's only about three encounters. Um, uh, very much in alpha. I'm just keeping it just for, like, Shadow of the Beast aesthetic and art. Frail Faces, um, Alpha, this is a shooter roguelike, I would say like Binding of Isaac, where like it's, you're in randomly generated levels, you shoot uh, twin stick style, very surreal aesthetic, you basically pick up, um, uh, it's very much more roguelike, or, or roguelike in that there's chests with, you basically, you kill things, you get keys, there are chests that says how many keys you open. You open the chest to get something, and basically it's different masks, and each mask is a different way you t shoot. So some shooting is like punching, sometimes you're shooting like a gun or a rifle or a or an arrow, a spread shot arrow. You create plants. I believe lots of creativity in the different masks you collect, and each time you die when one hit, you drop a mask, so you kind of progress forward, I think. Grime. Grime is a 2D Dark Souls. You like Dark Souls, you like Hollow Knight, this is it. Basically, it's a Dark it's a Souls-like game, except it's 2D, and the theme is clay. So basically, there's lots of pottery, there's lots of mud, your character who is like properly sculpted, all the enemies are like malformed statues and whatnot. When you uh you basically, when you're attacked, you do a parry and you absorb the clay shards, which is basically souls. It takes a while. It's about three minutes to actually get your weapon. But once you get the weapon, you're like, ah, yeah, this is Dark Souls. Okay. Guild of Dark Steel. Okay, this is interesting. If you like original OG uh, precision platformers like Prince of Persia, Another World, um, also known as... Uh, out of this world. If you like those type of games, this game, Guild of Dark Steel, is it. You basically have to go, it's like, it's a, okay, it's a platformer, it's 2D RPG, you go to town, you talk to people, and you go into this dungeon, but you're maneuvering in this dungeon and in the town is the Prince of Persia style, where, you know, specific things, I think Blackthorn is another one for Super Nintendo type of game. And when you actually come into an enemy, it goes to a different mode where you fight. And I believe, if I actually played Prince of Persia, I would suspect that it's probably pretty much similar to the original Prince of Persia of like you're fencing with a sword and that you attack high, attack low, and dodge with these enemies. In Sound Mine, a uh, first person psych psychological horror uh, type game. I don't know, just kind of. The first uh, two minutes kind of uh, uh, grabbed me. So yeah, first person survival horror thing. Interference, first person survival horror. Um, also just grabbed me. Basically, this is more of a premise of you are... You start out as a security guard in Arizona, in the Arizona desert, and for like a government research facility, and a bomb goes off, and so yeah, weird stuff starts happening, and you know, I believe it's going to play with hallucinations. Okay. <clears throat> Kingdom Gun. This is a really good uh, 2D, 2D run and gun, kind of Metroidvania. It's not Metroidvania because it's not you're exploring, it's you get deployed on missions, but basically, if you like a run and gun, uh, pew pew shoot contra uh, cuphead type game this is good because you can shoot uh, with your standard gun you can shoot uh, regular heart attack you can do rolls 
you can swap out guns and there's also four characters so each of the four characters have different type of gun loadouts so yeah kingdom gun mole man this game plays like bro force so it's bro force except it's also like terraria where you have to dig underground and kind of explore and gather things nimoid this is a builder craft survival game all i can think of this is basically like terraria you know, you explore, you gather resources, you find towns and discover things. Um, I guess also it's more like a computer-based, like Deus Ex, in that you have different... There's about eight characters you can play. You get to choose different perks about things such as, like, you know, survival ability, skills. The, uh, uh, also includes, like, charisma and whatnot. So this is kind of like create a sea, sur go down, sur basically you're recolonizing or re-exploring a planet. With all these different characters and different perks and whatnot and the difference is that it's isometric rather than a third person or 2d giants are uprising this is a wonderful hidden gem go down everybody go down play it third person uh basically a uh, third person game <clears throat> you are a literal giant and you walk around bashing buildings and stomping on them I love the feel of walking around because your movement is stuttered, but it's the actual boom, boom, boom of a giant. It's British. It's tongue in cheek. You have an actual human on your shoulder being your guide and telling you how to do these things. You have armies of people come up trying to take you down. They have giant siege weapons. And so you grab like the pinwheels or the giant, um, you know, the giant fencing and block of wood. And you have to throw them at the siege weapons to knock them down really gate try it out okinawa rush okay this i've yet to find a term for this game but it's basically an action game um i would say basically it's a run and gun like contra except there's no gun you're punching or have a sword so basically like ninja gaiden um i'm trying to think of another game sam there's a pc game that's like it's samurai something all right strider there we go it's like kind of like strider but it's not strider but anyways this game, it reminds me of a Sega Genesis action platformer. So you're a guy, Karate Master, you have a big kind of Sega Genesis style stage. So like Sonic the Hedgehog. You're moving left to right, but there's a huge verticality of up and down. You go out, explore, punch, and beat guys. You have a good combo, or at least you have a good system of various things of like punching and jumping and a roll and a block. Feels good if you like kind of a it's not a beat em up because the enemies die but basically you have a competent fighting system like a good beat em up but it's action based it's not like a, a brawler type of game but it is still killing them. okay overloop 2d puzzle platformer basically you have a gun and you make clones and you go for it so i know there's another game that's like this where you basically have a gun and you basically it's like you make a copy of yourself and then you kill yourself to move and solve puzzles this is similar to that um except you can i believe have mul you can have multiples of use like you can have 20 of you at no you can the gun has ammo and the ammo's bullets is six bullets so you can have five copies of you and run around and do stuff reyna and jericho okay this is a metroid i would say it's metroidvania or it's more of like an action a 2d action adventure game um hard to explain so basically your girl prisoner futuristic city you can move around you can oh i don't even remember what you do um can you punch do you have a gun i think you have a gun anyways metroidvania game kind of a little bit more story focused but you know it's like you go around you attack things you solve puzzles a little kind of stealth section and whatnot and yeah, just just interesting. A little bit more story focus. Archer, which is Wrath, definitely an alpha. This is orcs must die, or all orcs must die, except your Robin Hood. So basically, you have an archer. You have to deploy uh, different villagers at locations and survive the the onslaught. So yeah, Avelinia. I don't remember this one. 
but it says stealth action platformer. Let's see. Okay, now I remember. Oh no, I lost my place. Um, so Ave Linea. It is action adventure, so it's like a Zelda. Oh, I gotta sort by. Action adventure is kind of like a Zelda, but it's controlled Diablo style. And yeah, it's basically it's Zelda, so it's gonna be like going to area, solving puzzles. You can swing your sword three times. You can do a dodge roll. Oh, and the enemies, it's it's basically it's it's highly stealth based. So the enemy, all the enemies have a cone of sight. They move, and what I like is they they don't take forever to do the to do patrols or whatnot. So that's that's what it is. So if you want Zelda with a little bit, you know, top down isometric Zelda with uh, stealth, try this out. Captain Bones. Okay, this is survival crafting, but you're a pirate. So basically, uh, you get shipped up in an island. There's another survivor. It, you basically tell. You do the build up of, you know, you gather wood, you gather grass to make rope, you gather stones and wood to make your first axe, you get a coconut to have food, and then you build a bonfire. And so you, and then eventually you build up to a raft to explore other islands, and then you build up an actual boat so that you can lay siege to other ships to get gold and, and whatnot. It's. I would say very minor story based, but the thing is, is also this is a survival game in that this character has a hunger meter and a water meter, not just sta not just health and stamina. So yeah. Okay, Chameleon. This seems to be more of a PS1, PS2, third person or first person shooter or third person shooter. The gist is you're the chameleon. You basically are able to change your appearance to other characters in the game. So it is more stealth. It's a stealth-based game, but the fact that you can change the characters and sneak by, um, that is what I find unique. City of Beats. Twin-stick shooter. And awesome soundtrack. It's kind of like um, Bit Trip where basically every time you shoot it's the melody of the game so it's roguelike because i think you choose selections but yeah twin stick shooter i like it done this dodgeball academia this is pokemon except instead of poke battles it's dodgeball so if you like super dodgeball tecmo dodgeball from through the series or wind jammers get this game also i like the fact that it's um kind of cuts to the chase of you know you basically have a you the running capabilities at the start and you just you know so or so yeah if you like pokemon or you like i want to say sabusa soccer challenge where basically it's an rpg but you know, it's soccer instead of fights and battles and you like dodgeball this game is it echo blade definitely an alpha first person game melee not guns so you're with a sword you're swinging and basically the gist is like you're in complete darkness but whenever you swing you see a bit of light or whenever an enemy takes a step you see where they are and so basically it's kind of like very dark hide and seek um alpha just try it out entrapment um this i believe is okay this is a first person shooter your robots i believe it's a bit kind of like it's going to be a horde game like left for dead or vermintide or kind of a tower defense thing in which you have all these other enemies and robots coming to you and you survive through the onslaught progress and whatnot very alpha buggy but yeah everlasting guilt okay First person shooter, but there's lots of melee combat. So you have a gun, you have a sword, and you can attack high and low with the sword, you can block with the sword, you can parry. Okay, it's very interesting about how you actually have combat as shooter sword gunplay. Um, very unique, it, they kind of chain together and whatnot, like if you do a parry, you can do a stronger combo attack. And I believe the gist of this game is that it's going to be a boss rush. Okay, the story says there's a hundred there's a hundred doohickeys and they have a hundred guardians and blah blah blah. The demo, I believe, is like just you're just in a room, you're fighting the one character. So basically, I believe, you know, this is kind of first person boss rush. You're just, you know, 
almost like a Zelda game where you like you're gonna have to figure out the pattern of the boss, figure out how to what to do their weaknesses and their exploit and exploit it and go from there. Fantasy Network. Okay, this is a guilty pleasure. This is basically kind of casual adventure mini game collection. So president stepping down, you have to join all these uh all these cele- you know, all these uh, different reality game show games to get enough fame to be the next president. So like I said, guilty pleasure, you know, do the mini games for skill checks or at least yeah, to level up your various stats to have the check to progress. Franz Fury, top down car game, Mad Max, literally just drive just drive over and crash into everything and shoot everything. Okay. Fun. Okay. Gear shifters. This seems to be spy hunter, but you're going horizontal than vertical. Rather so slow paced. I'm just keeping it on here as okay, here seems to be like a new spy hunter type game, you know. Let's see what they can do well with it because it'll it has stages, it'll have upgrades and parts for the car, but you know, beginning. Gig Apocalypse. Super fun, arcadey. Um, Godzilla game. And basically this is gonna be probably very similar to the game that is done by the plants versus zombie guy where you're an octopus and you're just kind of rolling forward destroying the city so you're basically godzilla right click is you swipe your claws left click is you shoot beams you're constantly walking forward left to right and there's the army and the and all the skyscrapers and whatnot and you just blast everything uh great look yeah oh also you have like diablo style um skill so you have five skills that have cooldowns. so it's like a bigger blast you dash forward you can do a block and wait it has two you able to choose three different monsters which all would, would play i hope differently because one is godzilla one of them is more of like a snake dragon thing and another guy is a basically a giant uh rock man with a club and so i suspect they would play different uh they would play differently they have different hats that you would put on or helmets that would change it, such as, you know, you have generic Godzilla, you have one where his beam breath is stronger, you have one where his physical claws would be stronger, so there's a variety in that. Probably, hopefully, achievement or challenges to do stuff. Hyper Echelon. They don't remember. Top-down shooter. Let's see. Okay, now I won't make the mistake of actually doing this. Okay, this is a shmup. Um, shmup, it's not a bullet hell. There's some enemies that are immune. And I think I have it because it just, it's just a shmup. It feels good. And I believe like it's not total bullet hell. So I I can actually play it. Legend of Tiangding. Okay. This is a... Okay, I can't do that. This is a 2D um action beat em up game so kind of like strider um karate champ ninja gaiden except it's more punchy and the theme is basically ancient not ancient uh pre uh pre meijing let's say okinawa or hong kong one of those but basically uh Tang Ding, it's all physical, so he does martial arts. He has a little um, he has a little scarf, and the thing is with the scarf, he can actually attack the enemy, pull out their weapon, and then pick up their weapon and use it himself. I think maybe he has knives, okay. And he also does a double jump. It's kind of, his jumping is a bit more realistic. Felt good for kind of an action brawler platformer game. Okay, Lens Island. This is a survival craft game it the the trailer seems to suggest there's more like dungeons and things to explore but thus far at the beginning it's you have it controls um uh, it controls 100 percent diablo so 100 percent by the mouse which i don't like because i can't really do that as well but basically it's you know it's the minecraft don't survive you know you start with an axe you know you you punch trees punch rocks gather materials make stuff 
And it seems to be focused on, you know, exploration of this uh, pre-made crafted world and experience. Build your little homestead and house. And it really has like house building um, features. Okay, let's rock. It's a shmup. I forget what the gimmick or premises of it is. is. Let's rock. Okay. This is a shmup, but it plays like Galaga or Galaxian. You can't really move up. What I have this down is that it's the enemy design is very unique. First, it bombards you with all these asteroids, and then it bombards you with these garbage cans. But the garbage cans... No, wait, garbage cans, gas, uh, propane tanks, you know, propane tanks and propane accessories. So the propane tanks, they're actually leaking the gas. So they're spinning around, blowing the gas everywhere, bouncing around. So you have to avoid that. And let's see what else. I think also in this game, you have to actually do an escort. Like once you clear the asteroids and once you clear the thing, you actually move forward. Here we go. Yeah. You have to escort a truck. So basically, not only do you have the enemies coming down, you have to protect a vehicle behind you. So this seems like the enemies design in this game, Let's Rock, seem to be extremely unique. Okay, Liberté. Top-down Zelda game. Basically, it's set in the French Revolution. Uh, maybe alternate French Revolution, early modern Musketeer era. So there's a lot of sword play. So... You swing your sword, there's a timing towards it and a parry. Okay. Mayhem Brawler, this is a 2D, just basic 2D arcade puncher, like uh, uh, beat em up like Double Dragon. Three characters, comic book aesthetic, you seem to be like mutant police and trying to enforce law against other type of mutants. Miavrioa, okay. Miavio, uh, this is a tower defense game, except it's third person shooter. You have spiders coming on to attack your, your, your hill that you're protecting King of the Hill style. Um, and you move very fluidly, very high jumps, very floaty and in that type of mute in that type of movement, but it sort of fits. And you're not actually attacking, you have a whole series of traps. So, and I believe one of the traps is like pheromone. So it's like they, you put it down and there's a little dummy of you and all the enemies attack it and whatnot. And very interesting. Look, it's, it's, it's cruddy graphics, but if you try it out, it, it seems like it'll, it's very interesting and in kind of, a, you know, of setting up a perimeter, perimeter and doing stuff. Because I believe the more you shoot, the better you, um, the better you're like you automatically build up turrets and you're actually not close you're not controlling anything you're literally running decoy for the like alien system that's shooting all these bugs so yeah it's like for for a uh for a tower defense you play as the decoy and the game does the rest nuke zone okay this is a tank game and you go out you shoot things there's three different tanks there's like six different weapons and it's not arena you actually has an uh an area you go around and this kind of place to progress through as a tank it has some terrain it, you know you there's little hills and slopes you go up and down you shoot enemies and whatnot um seems fun and interesting park story okay this is basically action adventure, so Zelda, story based. So you're just a guy, you wake up, you don't know what you're doing, and you just kind of go around, explore, and kind of solve puzzles. I don't know if you have a weapon. I think maybe you swing a stick at the beginning or something, but basically, uh, the premise and like the story, or potentially what the story is, intrigues me. Rainbow Billy and the Curse of Leviathan. This is a kind of. Uh, this is a platformer. Uh, top down. You have a grapple hook. I couldn't get it off the first. Uh, I couldn't actually get it to run, period. It just like starts and I cannot move whatever via controller or keyboard. 
looks interesting as a platformer and um whatnot okay proto corgi horizontal shmup not a bullet hell your robot corgi that shoots things okay thing for me is that it's cute and it's not bullet hell it's not just too much for me projections this is interesting okay third person shooter you're a thing and the better you shoot and get scores the kind of higher tier level you are and it kind of um sort of like in bit chip world where the higher your score the more intense the world looks and the more better the music sounds and the more you get hit the less and lower the world is and less um the less the less pretty the game looks the more black and white it goes the enemy gets um gets uh, less aggressive and there is a and there is a there's a dodge mechanic in it so you shoot and if you the enemies will flash and make a sound and you dodge if you time the dodge correctly you actually do a counter attack so interesting project canopy I don't remember Okay, this is in super duper alpha. All you do is walk around in this area. There's nothing to it. It just says kind of open world survival crafting. So I believe it'll be a kind of a craft survival game. But what makes it unique is that this is in a jungle and there's lots of verticality. So there's lots of trees you can climb up and branches you can walk up. So you're getting high up there in the canopy. I play Guild Wars 2. So if someone else has played that and you know what verted brink is, that's what I think this game would be unique that there's a high level of verticality via tree climbing and kind of setting up maybe tree villages rabbit hole um i believe i just had this as kind of a third person survival horror interesting thing gave me kind of silent hill vibes the la the later games and whatnot so yeah Oh, another, this game, Radio Viscera. This is another thing. Games I do not like and are not on this list are games with platformers with physics. I do not want any jank and just want to, so this one is an uh, exception. So Radio Vis Viscera, uh, twin stick shooter with an isometric perspective, physics based. And basically you're going through this factory with a gun. You can blow up the walls and people are trying to kill you. And what you're going to try to do is basically kill the other guys but you push the other guys into the other basically safety hazards of this factory so oh look here's this vat of acid oh look here's this uh you know here's this electrical here's this control panel with electrical wires hanging up oh look here's the meat grinder <laughs> you know so a uh, comedy based uh kind of twin stick shooter push push the guys trying to stop you into um into hilarious death traps Raptor Territory, definitely an alpha, basically first person game where you're a raptor, you have a nest, and basically the little, the, the smaller raptors are going to come in and try to take your eggs, and you basically stop them from doing that, you can go and raid other nests and whatnot, very basic, seems to be more multiplayer, kind of personal server type games like Rust or... Uh, basically a game that would have like servers and lobbies and whatnot, but you know... You play as a dinosaur to eat things in first person and kind of cold territory. Replicator. I don't uh, think it's twin stick shooter, but uh, anything in particular. Nope, just twin stick shooter. Uh, looks good, feels good. Usually that's what, I th that's what I go for twin sticks. Is like, is it, do the guns and the, and the combat feel nice? Research and destroy. Okay. I most likely will not play this game, but this is what it is. It's a first person shooter that's kind of tactics based a la XCOM. The aesthetic is late 60s, late 50s, early 60s, Scooby Doo, sci fi, um, zombie ate my neighbors type game. Okay. And you're three researchers and you're put in a position. And you have a gun, each one of you has a gun, and basically looking around doesn't move anything. You can look around as much as you want. If you're walking or shooting, 
you're using up time. And each one of these characters has 30 seconds. So you each character, so you use 90 seconds to position these characters first person style to kill any enemies around, such as zombies, werewolves, vampires. And then it's the enemy's turn, and then they move. They have 30 seconds to do their moves to, you know, get close and attack you. And then it's your turn. So that's why I say, like, it's kind of XCOM. It's turn-based. And the first tutorial is basically like, okay, you know, let's get to the... Uh, get to the get back into the van from zombies. And the first level is basically the castle of Dr. Tongue from Zombie Ace, My Neighbors. And if you sheath your gun, you can walk faster than if you have it unsheathed and the guy in the hazmat suit can't sheath it because reasons they even say like we don't know why he doesn't put it it seems to be attached to his arm and he cannot even let it let it go some ways um this looks like a fun game as in like this is fun this is wacky the people who make it enjoy it love it just tongue-in-cheek okay rift world don't remember okay I do remember. Action adventure, first person view. So you go around, you solve puzzles, Zelda style, you know, no dungeon. I don't believe there's any dungeons whatsoever. It just, you know, you figure out puzzles, you can shoot things. The aesthetic and I believe story sort of grabbed me. I think it's a little bit too, actually no, I think the world is what grabbed me because I believe the narration is a bit too touchy feely, introspective type such. But I believe the puzzles kind of caught my attention while doing this. Rift World. Oh, wait. Yes. Okay. Rift World. No, I did it again. The thing about this is to solve the puzzles, you need resources. So you have five colored crystals. You have red, you know, red, you know, red, yellow, blue, green, purple. In order to hit the switches to progress Zelda style, and, you know, move the ramp and open the door. You have to use the correct colored crystals to kind of, you know, you use the crystals to turn on the machine and then you work the machine to advance forward for the puzzle. That's what caught my attention. Okay, Rift World. All right, let's see. How, how are we? Yeah. I am blabbing too much. Rift World. Okay. Uh, Road 96, this seems to be a Telltale style adventure game. And, but basically the gist is, which I don't really care for, like I said, adventure. But what I, what grabs me is that this is more like a choose your own adventure. So basically you're a person hitchhiking and you got to go to the destination. And your decisions affect how you, what happens in the rest of the thing. So basically it is like a choose your own adventure of like who you meet and what those relationships are to you and so on and so forth. See to life. Okay, my mistake. I believe this is the game where it's uh, Zelda and and you have different colored crystals to unlock things. So I guess, okay, Rift World I think is just a, okay, Rift World, correction, is a first person shooter. Um, Kind of bullet hell in which the enemies kind of, they do like very spread attacks, but it's, it's, first person so you can position yourself and not go um get too close and and whatnot and basically it's like you're just a bunch of islands floating in the floating in the middle of nowhere so there's a little a uh, little bit of platforming you clear the enemies hit the check mark kind of jump um hill to hill and then you jump through a, a rift uh you jump through a hoop and then it's another series of platformers thing i would say platformer kind of like lovely planet you know just it just it's not corridors it's open worlds okay smash dungeon this is dark souls but top down in room to room roguelike a la binding of isaac um kind of an alpha but yeah this is kind of you know the slow combat of dark souls but a binding of isaac type um dungeon layout not the shooties and the enemy design but whatnot song of iron okay this is a slow action platformer uh viking style um very slow heavy hitting type controls just play the controls you strong attack weak attack throw 
throw your axe, you can parry, but it's 2D and side scrolling, pure side scrolling. Zofar, okay, this is a shmup. It looks like it's billet hell, but I have it here, so that means it would sort of manageable. Okay, so yeah, Zofar star. Soulbound steel. Okay. Is this the one? Okay, this is basically top-down action adventure Diablo-esque, but it's not. It doesn't control like Diablo. It controls uh, well with the uh, tw controls twin stick style, and basically you're a necromancer and you're just doing waves and waves of like undead to attack other characters and whatnot. So yeah, action top-down action adventure twin stick, space revenge. Okay, uh, top-down twin stick advent twin stick controller. Space kind of has stealth, maybe action adventure type deal. Um, felt good, I liked it, and the kind of the very basic stealth uh, wasn't annoying. So, yeah, top down shooty action. -y. Starless, okay, this is a pure stealth game, it is 2D, which I kind of like as opposed to 3D or first person stealth. Um, so you avoid the patrols, and in the patrols you have to hack the system, and there's an actual, like, giant map of the spaceship as you get prompted from mission control of, like, okay, go to Sector 4, go to Sector 3. If you have to get to Sector 3, you have to go to Sector 5, and you have to put the stuff together to actually maneuver and escape. So that's, I found that interesting. I believe the, I believe, like, the, there's no hacking minigame, or, like, lock picking minigame but the fact that you have to do different panels and get control of the map yeah succubus first person shooter you are a succubus in hell and you're just killing everything so i would i, I, want, I don't want to say like it's like doom but basically like a very visceral very gory sexually kind of you know explicit game but basically let's see oh and it's melee okay so you have knives you have a you have Let's see, the tutorial, or at least I, this is one of the games like I did it for five minutes and then stop because I don't want to spoil it. You start out with two knives that are very quick, and then you get a sword, which is very slow. You have succubus powers of like, you have a shotgun, a fireball, you can heal yourself, and something else. Also, which is none of those uh, abilities use mana. There's another ability which doesn't cost mana where you can automatically pull the enemies towards you. And to heal up, you basically go to a normal human person torch that's uh, being tortured and just rip out their heart. Otherwise, you're just killing demons. Okay, Super Dream Dasher. This is a classic 16-bit platformer. You're a ball, and you're basically going left to right, except you can do Sonic Spinball Attack, th uh, the 3D style where you lock on automatically to, a, to an enemy, and you just go boom, 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 and kind of chain them to move. Survival Instinct, top-down, top-down kind of survival tactical game, so mm, I would say maybe closest would be like This War Mine, except it's top-down, so you have to gather resources, get equipment, and uh, go out and explore. Survive Into the Night, okay, this is another top-down, it's kind of survival, and although the graphics are crummy, there's something that intrigue. I believe it. Uh, the exploration and potential story intrigues me because basically it says it's almost like the original Silent Hill one on PlayStation One, in that like there's no in-game map. It's just the map of the town, and so you have to navigate by the directions people give you. And so unless you know how to read to read a map in the real world without GPS and follow instructions. You will not make it through this game. Survival into the night. Tandem of Tail of Shadows. Okay, this is a puzzle platformer. And the gist is you're controlling two characters. The girl is in a 3D, is in 3D top down, moves around, and she carries a lantern. If you can and you can switch automatically to her bear, which is a 2D platformer. 
but it's in the shadows. So how the girl holds the lantern will affect the shadows that the bear is able to move. So the first thing you do is you basically, you have the girl move into one position and that shows a shadow, which is a platform for the bear to walk. But if you move the girl in a different position, the angle goes, the angle goes up and down, allowing you to, the bear to actually get across because sometimes it's too high and blocks off. Sometimes it's too low and you can't jump up to continue. Treasure Hunters. This is a third person, top down type of game where basically you're Indiana Jones trying to uh, go to the archaeological sites and steal from Nazis. The controls are very jank. It's tank controls, doesn't go well, but basically it's like you start in the base, you get in the car, drive the car to a place, um, search the area to grab the loot and get back. You have a gun, and uh, yeah. There is no light. Okay, this is basically top-down, souls-like game. Looks good, feels good, slow, atta slow attacks, wham, dodge roll, block. Just felt good, you know. Like I said, certain games, like 30 seconds, like, yep, this is good. I'm putting out. They will always run. Okay, this is a 2D. Ah, okay, this is a 2D action game feels very good okay so strider katana zero i think that's the game i've been trying to think of katana zero okay jump moving when you attack the enemies you can do count you basically attack the enemies do 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 um punch kick and usually in these type of games the right stick is where you would con you would use to aim the gun you, an extra gun you have and shoot at a distance. Not this game. You're a mutant or a cyborg that has a third arm, and the right stick controls your third arm. And so while you're attacking, punching, and kicking, and rolling to avoid the enemies, you can use and uh, instead of using the right stick to kind of pull out the gun to shoot, let's say enemies far away, you can pull out your you use the right stick to pull out your third arm to sucker punch. So usually it's like you're fighting a big boss and then the any, the bad guys are coming from the back. So you turn around just to shoot your, you throw a grenade or shoot a gun to deal with the, the bad guys. And then you fight on the other side. No, here you pull out your third arm to sucker punch them in the back. and You don't even have to turn around. Or you do the sucker punch at the correct time. You just send them flying through the doors and whatnot. Very fun. Oh, and that reminds me of the other one. Um. Uh, the other game here, the one that's kind of Metroidvania that it couldn't sell, tell about with the girl and kind of more, I say it's probably more story based. There's a mechanic in that if the girl approaches, here we go, Reyna and Jericho. If the girl approaches a door and there's an enemy on the other side, you can push a button so that she just kicks open the door and sends the enemy flying. So that's what I mean about like interesting kind of controls. Mm, can't see the light. Survival instinct into the night. There's no light. Tiny Thor, Genesis platformer, you're Thor, you have Mjorn, and when you throw it, it goes forward and it comes back to you, but also the stage and the levels are designed such that Mjorn can bounce around at the right angles, laser type style, so you collect coins and hit various enemies and whatnot. But otherwise, I'm not too impressed, it's more of like, okay, you want a Genesis platformer with a, with a kind of a laser, is a laser a bouncing gameplay? Here we go. Tunnel of Doom. <clears throat> okay. This is tower defense. You control a girl, you're in a mine, and when you enter the room, you set up you set up a series of traps. So you can set up barricade squares of barricades, you can set up a cannon, and then you say go, and then the goblins come out and they um you they you do well in getting rid of the wave of like five goblins or you don't and basically it's uh binding of isaac you know roguelite dungeon style of that you know it's zelda ish you have all these squares you get to go and visit each one's a different layout and controls and you you can explore the area or go to the boss and whatnot and you have resources but it's basically if you know the game Gata Protectors, that's the type of tower defense style it is. It's, you know, you set up the situation, you click go, 
and you uh, kind of use traps and positioning and oh, also there's trap and natural hazards in the room to uh, deal with it. Unmetal. Uh, Metal Gear 1 on the MSX, Metal Gear 1 and 2, this is it, on metal. Unsighted, okay. This is an action adventure game, top down, twin sticks controls, looks good, feels good, great. It, it took me a while. Once I got the, once I got the, once I got my sword, which kind of takes a while because you have to kind of explore and figure out for storytelling purposes. Once I got my sword, I was like, yep, this is good. Okay. Great. Happy little RPG mechanics and whatnot. Feels good. Usurper Spellbound. Okay. I do not remember. I believe this is just like top-down Souls-like. So basically it's like slow combat, feels good. Slow, you know, chain attacks, dodge roll, parry, and whatnot. But nothing like, um, I don't know anything about exploration or being super hard. It's only Souls-like because it's like Dark Souls or Monster Hunter where the, the how you chain the attacks makes a difference. Okay, Whisper Trip. Okay, this one I went backseas on, but basically it is a... Well, maybe not. I believe this is just an action game that felt good. So Strider, Katana Zero, Run and Hack and Slash. Run and Hack. Um, how will you do that? Zoe. Okay, Zoe or Zoe. This is Fantasy Zone. The arcade game by Sega Fantasy Zone where basically um, you can fly, you can walk on the ground, you're shooting everything, the screen loops. So if you go forward, you will loop on yourself. You do things to get money. There's a shop that appears to get your upgrades. Uh, just the controls are probably just going to take a while to get used to. But basically, like you just shoot everything. Um, dash to shoot for money. Dash down to re-get your ability. But this is kind of a more refined, polished um, fantasy zone. Death Cathedral. This is a action hack and slash. It's kind of more of a boss mode dueling thing. So basically it's the game, kind of the arcade game Trojan, where you attack of high high slash up, high low slash down, block high, block down, roll back, roll against your enemies, parry. Um, yeah. And basically it's kind of dual. You just like... You have 15 days to go forward, and so I like, guess there's like 30 opponents to go through. Or you can choose to rest and kind of go through this gauntlet of uh, duels. Antipole DX. Okay, this is a 2D, uh, 2D puzzle platformer. Goes around running gun style, but the levels are closer to Metroid uh, design rather than Contra design. And basically you can reverse gravity, so... And a limited amount. So if you like reversing gravity going up and down, anti-pole DX. Bandit Simulator. Okay. First person controls. This gate is basically the game Thief from or playing the uh playing a thief in Skyrim, Oblivion, or Elder Scrolls, or Morrowind. So if you like um if you like first person and you like just going around taking everything and then trying to take as much as you possible and getting out, that is this game. That's the basis. There's a little bit of stealth in that you, you know, make sure you walk, you know, make sure you tiptoe and then you can, uh, if you attack from behind, you can knock the person out. But basically it's, you got to do that to, um, there's a stealth game, but there are sections like, Here's all the things you can grab, and like go grab them, and you have a weight limit. Let's see, it'll be better in the screenshot if I pull it up, or maybe not. So, anyways, different environments you're gonna steal, build up things. Okay, B. Arc, freaking adorable horizontal shooter. Um, seems to have a bullet hell style, but. There's enough for me to... It's not too bad that I don't think that I could play it. It has four different characters. They each play differently. A la... 
I believe one's normal shooting, one's a laser, homing missiles, exploding missiles. They all have different uh, kind of super abilities. Just adorable. Bark. Adventures Pip's old game. I only got it because I looked at the develop who developed Bark, and um, they also did Pip. And I believe it's kind of like the Adventures of Chip or 8-Bit. Or basically, it's um, you're basically playing like an RPG arcade game. Uh, so action platformer, but uh, kind of like uh, Wonder Boy. Uh, but you progress through the history of the of the game. So basically, start out as a single dot, and then you go to a kind of a Nintendo eight bit sprite, and then you kind of get a fully, uh, I guess, some currently modern, you know, um, flash and flash drawn character with uh, animated. Okay, Chenzo Club. This seems to be like a multiplayer arena game where you're just four people in a room kill each other. It controls like Smash Brothers, as so that there's a there's regular attack forward down up special attack forward down up down special up is basically a a double jump or enhances the jump. I like the fact of the field of it's being a game. It's more of like even though it's going to be more like party game focus, that there would be a single player mode where you basically go and just kill a bunch of enemies and move to the next screen, a la Bubble Bobble. Cosmoscope. Okay, this is a shmup, 2D top down. The thing is, is that you, there's 12 levels to an to the stage. So you're on floor one. There's enemies. You shoot them. Go to floor two, where there's more enemies. You shoot them. Go to floor three. You shoot the enemies. The thing is, though, you can do it while you're on a different level. The other enemies move. So basically, you're on floor two one. The enemies are going to do a super attack. You go up to floor two, reposition yourself for your behind the enemies, go down to floor one, they shoot, the attack misses, and you just burn them down. So it doesn't actually have ten levels, and um, it'll make more sense. It's, it's, um, it, it makes sense if you take it at the elevator. Okay, Cyberhook. This is first-person parkour game, so you run forward, you jump, and go platform to platform. You have a grappling hook. I believe... Um, the story of my uncle is probably very similar to this. I have it on this list because the physics of the grappling felt, feels good compared to other parkour games I've tried. Amber Knights, top-down action adventure, uh, twin stick controls. So if you like Zelda Four Swords, that's this game. You know, just go room to room, kill, killing things. Um, feels good. Apocrya. Okay. This seems to be a survival crafting game where you're kind of, you know, in a dungeon. The I like the aesthetics. I didn't come across it in my recommendations, but I saw in a it was mentioned in my social media, kind of in the communities I am. Like, thanks, uh, uh, Test Fest, because it's one guy he's making this game and he's like, you just showing off that like 800 people downloaded it. You know, that's a that's big to like one person, but. Although it's kind of clunky and kind of what he's going to do, I like his aesthetic of, or the style that he is animating and drawing his world. X-Crawlers. Okay, I believe this is just top-down dungeon crawler, kind of, um... Oh, this one was borked. Okay. Yeah, I could not get past the room, but the fight... Okay, you control it, WASD, and twin stick with the mouse slash 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 choo 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 roll okay um and you seem to get an arrow and you can shoot an arrow and have um your sword slashing couldn't get it past the first room i'm just having it as you know keep on for later glad haters okay simulation game or management game Basically, you have to do a lot of menus, but what you do is you run a gladiator arena, so you make your gladiators who are mutant clones, and you fight them. The fighting is basically Karate Champ, so it's very, very janky, very kind of grid-based, grid, -based, grid uh, sequence action thingies. Uh, just on my, you know, keep on, uh, keep in mind. I think. Grapple hoops. This is a parkour game, so this is Mirror's Edge, first person, running. Uh, running fast, jumping high, walking on walls and skyscrapers. Except you have a basketball. 
and there's a hoop at the end. So basically, you're going to run off the skyscraper, jump off Spider-Man swing to the next skyscraper, walk on the wall, take a giant jump, and dunk the thing. I couldn't get it, but um, very interesting to add a basketball to a parkour because that just totally fits the uh, the dream, the not the dream, but the yeah, the the fantasy of parkour. You know, Hollow Two, um, first person shooter. I said I didn't know how it feels or good. Kind of looks interesting. Just keep in mind, Legend of Valhalla. Okay, this one. Okay, top down hack and slash has to be okay. Top down hack and slash. I wouldn't have this if it wasn't fully Diablo controlled, but it's basically a Diablo game and kind of um. Oh wait, now I remember. Yes, it's a Diablo game. You do control it with the mouse, uh, Norse theme. Kind of seems interesting. I kind of have a feeling that it might be a mobile game because there's lots of questing and kind of things to gather and do and achieve, but we'll see. All right, Moons of Dal Asad. Okay, this is extremely interesting. I doubt I will like the game. Even the guy says, was like, okay, move forward, and now to jump, you push the right left trigger. Yes, I know. What is the developer thinking? It will make more sense. Left trigger. This is Abe's Odyssey. So basically, you're playing a little spaceman moving in, moving in the world. It's very slow, deliberate movement. But you go through the 2D stage, kind of that's almost designed like it's from Lemmings. And when you meet a fellow astronaut, you say, hey, they will follow you automatically. And then you give them directions. And so you have to escort them and whatnot. So Abe's Odyssey, it seems like it's Lemmings and Abe's Odyssey of like, you know, you're escorting these these people to do things and the commands are like, go left, go right, stop, and follow me automatically. Moons of Darsalon. Mortal Sin. First person, hack and slash. So melee combat, first person game. Seems to be like classic, more classically of Doom of like, you know, you just go and kill things. Uh, very dark, very unique aesthetic. I believe one guy is doing it by himself. Uh, unpolished, buggy, but basically it's, you know, it's more of I would, say, I would think classic Doom is of like first person, just go and killing everything, but it's with the sword rather than gun. Patient Zero. I believe I just had this as a twin stick shooter. That just feels good. Peppo. This is a 2D shooter run and gun, except basically you shoot out three colors, red, yellow, or basically it should be red to yellow, blue. And certain enemies can only be affected by certain colors. Um, I believe it's Japanese or Korean um, developers. So it's going to be, it's very polished right now. So it's going to be more polished. Um, as it finishes. Pirates of the Asteroid Belt. I believe this is just a uh, PC action adventure RPG game. So basically, yeah, just kind of third person, first person game. Um, you go out and explore, have a story. Um, definitely needs polish and kind of first time. Rogue Spirit. Zel uh, 3D Zelda game, except you're a ghost and you possess people and you go out and just... Zelda things of like questing and adventuring and whatnot. Seem it's done by I believe a well established developer, Kids with Sticks. Or anyways, it's done by Five O Five Games, and so it's usually uh, Five O Five. I like the I like I like the publisher. At least I like the games on it. it has how to survive and whatnot. Synthetic Two. Okay, this is a top down twin six shooter. They have Synthetic One, except Synthetic One is purely two D, and this is kind of isometric three D. So. Uh, they know what this game is. Everybody likes the original game, so this is the sequel, where it just kind of looks prettier. And Luna Arc, this is a game I went to get back. If you like two classic 2D platformers, such as pre or Precision Platformers, Prince of Persia, Blackthorn, Another World, Out of This World, Into Darkness, the sequel, this is basically the sequel to 
another world out of this world. Not the first game. The the game had another game, a sequel. Not not the one about the kid, but there's another one that's a kind of 2D and specific jumps. And you, you have the gun in another world where you, you can shoot quickly or charge shoot to create a shield. Yeah, if you like it, if you like that type of game and want more of it, that's it. All right, so that is part one. I still have another 175 games to go through. I don't know how I'm going to do that because those were the those games are going to be the simulation management RPG games, which I know I'm unfamiliar with those type of things like real time strategies and whatnot. So I can't tell immediately what the game is going to be like. And so and also those type of games, they take a little bit longer to reveal themselves like once once the the mechanics or the ideas click. So anyways, until next time, I am T-Row, and have fun gaming. See ya.